Welcome to the She's a 10 Times 5 show with hosts Lori Jabbar and Michelle Emick. We're bringing public figures, subject matter experts, and other accomplished guests to the Studio 50 table to serve you up the best tips, tricks, and key takeaways that all us midlifers want to know about. Okay, time to join us for some Times 5 fun. Let's go. This week's guest is world-renowned Dr. Amir Karam. Dr. Karam is double board certified by the American Board of Facial Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery. Dr. Karam has developed his patented vertical restore and vertical prevent techniques designed to address laxity and the facial shape changes associated with aging with customized fat transfer as an innovative way to permanently replace facial volume. In this episode, Dr. Karam will give us five key things we need to know in order to look as good as we feel on the inside. Let's go. Hey, everyone. Welcome to She's a 10 times 5. I am Lori, and I have my pal and co-host, Michelle, here with me. Hey, Michelle. Hello. Glad to be here. Yeah, you are. All right. We got a great topic. We got a great topic, and this is right up your alley for many, many reasons. We are bringing back to the table Dr. Amir Karam, the hot doc, Mm-hmm. He's going to talk about how we we can look as good as we feel. Thank you for that. Do. Yep. Yes. I kept getting that backwards. It's, you know, we want to look as good as we feel because I personally want to look 25 because that's how I feel. Yes. And I years of working with, with women and primarily women of over 50, and they used to say, Michelle, I feel, I know I'm like 60, but I still feel 25 in the inside. And so, you know, maybe we're all, maybe we're not turning the clock back that far, but if there's some things that we can do to help us restore, you know, that youthful appearance, then I want to know about them. Yes. And, you know, Dr. Karam is, he's a world renowned facial plastic surgeon, but he's also done a lot of studying and developed his own skincare line. So I think he's going to talk about all the things that we can do um, and control on our end to help slow down the aging process. But here's what I love about him. He's kind of an old bullshit guy too. Like he's mm-hmm. going to give us the straight deal. He doesn't sugarcoat things. He um, He's just kind of the a really yeah. honest. Yeah. Real deal. He's the real mm-hmm. deal. And, and, you know, it's a, it's just a, a this is an industry where we call it the wild, wild west. And people are so confused. They don't know what they need. There's so many services and modalities out there. And so what I love about him is that he he does keep it real and he provides great information um, that he's put out there on you know social media platforms. And so now we get to have him in here today and, and get some great takeaways. Yeah, because I'm tired of playing whack-a-mole. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go. Welcome, Dr. Amir Karam, a.k.a. the hot doc. <laughs> Sorry, had to, had to go there. Had to go there. I'm taking off my Mrs. Magoo glasses, um, but I had to get a good look before I took them off. Thank you so much for being here. And Michelle and I are really excited because I, one, I've been talking about you incessantly since your episode, and she follows you incessantly. And this is going to be a great opportunity for you to have the platform to give all of us an idea of how we make our faces look and feel as good as we do on the inside. So let's go. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm really excited to actually be with you guys and share some of these uh, these concepts because I think people really need to know what it takes to do that in the most efficient and easy way possible. I think people are so confused and oftentimes misled into different directions that aren't, uh, aren't always productive and, and uh, disappointing. So um, any opportunity to share that, I'm happy to do so. Awesome. I'm I'm excited to talk about it. And I know I, you know, I spent 20 years of my career in, in this field working with patients. And the number one thing I would hear is, especially from the women 50 and older, I want to look better, not different. Yeah. And this is this is you all over because when I started following you, I was like, "Look at his work! It's absolutely gorgeous!" And people look refreshed, and they still look like themselves. They just look like 
you know, they've got that more youthful appearance. And so I'm excited that we're going to talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So how would you guys like to get started? <laughs> I think you, you know, we're, we're asking in the spirit of she's a 10 times five. It's the five takeaways on these. How episodes. do we get there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So give us your five and then I'm sure we'll have a bunch of, of fun questions for you along the way. Absolutely. So here's, here's what it comes down. You nailed it. You know, when almost 20 years of doing this now and no one wants to look like a different version of this. So at least not the ones that I see. And I think patients who come, you know, right around the perimenopause, postmenopause ages, the face starts to take a change. And there's there's hormonal reasons why that happens. I mean, it's, it's estrogen drops, then, you know, the, a series of changes to the skin and the, the, the shape of the face starts occurring. So what I've noticed is that when that happens, people start to look unfamiliar to themselves, start to feel like they're almost like wearing a mask because it's kind of a funny, funny little... Um, you know, trick that our, our, our minds play on us in the sense that our actual sense of self doesn't really change, but yet our chronological age changes. And with it, at some point, all these physical manifestations start to happen as well. You know, how old do you like close your eyes and tell me how old do you feel? And, um, and how old are you actually? And there's like a 20, 30 year gap between those two numbers. You know, it's like everyone seems to feel kind of frozen in their in their 30s, yet, you know, they could be 50 or 60. And when the physical manifestations start, you know, manifesting, it's like, wait a minute, that's not cool. And I want to do something about it. And that's what basically is the entire, I would say, motivation and um, demand for cosmetic and plastic surgery and aesthetic, you know, industry work is, is people are striving for that. But at the end of the day, if you don't know what it takes to, you know, rewind as opposed to kind of go into these different tangents and look like a different person, then it can be also equally as, as uh, disheartening and frustrating, um, you know, going down that road and not being not getting what you originally wanted, which is simply to look as young as you feel. And I think that that notion has been my driver all the way through. And I think that has really kind of led to some principles that I that I want to uh, to share. And, and I think it'll make everything a lot simpler and easier. And, and principle number one is that what it what makes up a young looking face is basically a combination of young looking skin and young looking facial shape so what does young looking skin look like it's basically supple it's it's kind of a, has a thickness to it it's clear it doesn't have a bunch of of uh, discolorations whether they're brown spots from sun exposure red spots from broken capillaries and it doesn't have fine lines and wrinkles right that's like young looking skin in a nutshell then when you think about facial shape you look at it and you got a firm looking jawline, neck is nice and firm, mid face isn't crowding around the, the nasal labial folds, the corners of the eyes aren't, aren't hooding down, you don't have excess skin all over the eyelids and the lip is in, the, in a good youthful position. So all of that together kind of we describe it as like the, the heart shaped face of, of youth and then a, you know, a triangular, um, you know, with a base, you know, like a normal um, uh, upright triangle as aging where everything kind of goes this way or another kind of image is, is basically you go, you turn into like a rectangle, right? It's like everything gets longer and more square down below. So those are that that shape aspect is equally as important as skin. The, and this is kind of like the simple division. Skin is really up to the person to manage. That is like a individual, do it at your, do it at home, take care of it. Your skin can literally not age if you do it the right way. I mean, it's an, it's a crazy notion to think about, but there's plenty of evidence for, of, and I will talk about what that, what it takes to basically keep your skin from aging. And then when it comes to facial shape, very simply, once that, once the shape is quote unquote misshapen, then that's when you go visit your plastic surgeon, facial rejuvenation surgeon, and you do things like the vertical restore or some, you know, deep play facelift and da 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 to get the shape back up into position. Very efficient, very simple, and then off you go. So looking at, at what it takes to kind of like do it in a stepwise fashion, I mean, number one, when it comes to skin, it starts with a lifestyle, a healthy lifestyle. I mean, the skin is an organ, right? At the end of the day, it's like, it, it's a reflection of our overall health. So if, our, if we're drinking a ton, if we're smoking, if we're, you know, bathing in the sun constantly, um, just living, you know, having tons of stress, not sleeping well, guess what shows? It's our skin, right? What ages us, believe it or not, like 70% of the things that I mentioned that happens with skin aging 
are directly related to sun exposure, right? Discoloration, accelerated collagen loss, all that kind of stuff. Now, in the background of all of it, your collagen is diminishing as time goes on anyway. Believe it or not, it peaks at age 29 or 28, somewhere in that range. And then it's like a slow descent until you get to perimenopause. And then it really starts accelerating after that. When estrogen levels drop, you see the collagen production curves really drop with it. And that's like when you start to see the skin thinning and all that other stuff. So really at the at the crux of it all, when it comes to skin, it's like habitual, prop, you know, like really focused, deliberate approaches to healthy lifestyle and healthy skin habits, which at the end of the day is is harder to you know accomplish more than probably anything else because it's okay. It's like fun to, to go in and get a treatment once in a while, but it's the hard work is the stuff you have to do every single day, right? <laughs> Apply active ingredients, you know, keep yourself out of the sun, live a healthy lifestyle. And even for myself, I would say, that has probably been overall the hardest thing that I've ever, you know, I mean, I went 11 years without exercising during my residency and surgical training days. I was just so busy. I just felt like that was the one thing I was willing to give up on. <clears throat> but, you know, I mean, that, imagine if you never came back from that, like what you're, what you're at 50, I feel better, almost 50. I feel better than I did even in my, my twenties, because now I live like a totally different lifestyle. I exercise every day. I eat well, you know, I do all the things that, that are, that are consistent with just being healthy and the skin is going to benefit from that as well. But that's like the hard work creating those type of habits. And then I would say the second piece, you know, sort of like pillar number two is people understand skincare, but they don't understand it properly. Like what okay. is it mean to be on a good skincare routine? It's actually as simple as it might sound is actually a little bit more complicated in, in terms of theory than it is because remember your skin is aging in a multifaceted way. It's as we mentioned, losing collagen, which has those manifestations of fine lines and wrinkles and thinning. It gets dehydrated with age. It gets pigmented. It The oil balance changes, so you get more pores. Pores get clogged. They become dilated. So there's all these kind of changes that are happening to the skin. So the things that you actually need to do for your skin is do something that has an impact at the genetic level, the DNA level, that is actually going to stimulate collagen. It's going to slow down pigment production at the melanocyte level. It's going to unclog pores, you know, all these different things. So it actually, when you look at what it takes to do the right things for your skin, it ends up being like, you know, categorically like six, seven, eight, nine, ten steps of, of traditional, you know, things like you need a retinol, you need a vitamin C. These are categories of active skincare ingredients. It takes like a lot of stuff. You need, you know, oil production, you know, cleanser, all these different components, hydrators, all that. And when you put it all together, it's like it becomes overwhelming for yeah, a lot. Okay, of people, right? I got a question here. So yeah. I know that they're, especially if they're 10 times fives or higher, Yeah, we s screwed the pooch on a lot of this because we weren't educated. I mean, we baked ourselves in the sun. Oh, yeah. We had right. bad eating habits. So for those listening or watching and they want to know, God, is it too late? Can you reverse any of the skin aging part? hundred percent. And we see it okay. every day. Like even my Ooh. wife, who was literally, I mean, we're all in the same generation in the sense yeah. of like everyone we grew up with, and I'm sure you guys were the same as like, you know, sun-kissed skin, lay by the pool, you know, tanning lotion is like, tanning that's beds. right. Tanning beds, etc. Yeah. So what's fascinating and what's beautiful about it is yes, absolutely. You can reverse those changes. Like I I'll tell you, like my wife at age 35, she had significantly more sun damaged skin than she, and, and less supple skin than she has at nearly 50 because in the last 15 years, she's been like rock solid on the right things to do for her skin. And her skin literally has improved. And we see it all the time with our patients. Also, we do surgery on them. Then they go off and start taking care of their skin. We see them back at a year later, their skin looks significantly better. And then that, you know, two years later, it looks even better. So the beauty of it is these things can be reversed. But the key though, is to have patience with it, because nothing is going to happen immediately overnight. Like somebody described it as like a, you know, um, like an aircraft carrier trying to make a U-turn in the ocean, as mm -hmm. opposed to speedboat like surgery like when your jowls are sagging you come in the or with me and three hours later right. you're you're right there right but but the skin is not gonna there's nothing you can do for the skin that's going to reverse course that quickly it's it's a it's a slow steady process and that's why pillow number one is so important is you got to get on the right habits but you got to couple your habits with the right active ingredients on a daily basis to be able to make that so what's fascinating is 
each of these, you know, really pro powerful active ingredients have a very direct, you know, so sort of like role in the process. And you don't want to, you know, buy an expensive moisturizer, you know, go to some luxury goods store and buy like a $300 moisturizer and think you're doing the right thing for your skin, because all you're doing at that point is just taking care of the moisture aspects of your skin. And I think that's what a lot of women yep. do. I think 100%. they're not looking at this, yeah. you know, they, they go, they go get the little tiny jar of La Mer and they think that's going to solve their problems. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And it, and that's what was, quite frankly, so frustrating for me to hear and see from our, our my, my patients is like the lack of understanding, but also the how easy it was to be lulled and fooled into, into this misdirection. What a costly misdirection that is, not just in terms of money, but time. Because at the end of the day, what we talked about is like what motivates them to buy it in the first place is their desire to look as young as they feel. And then when they get onto the wrong combination of things or, or lacking certain things, they're never going to improve their skin, literally never going to improve it. So then they're like wasting all this time and then they get disappointed, then they get, you know, down. And so I think there's a lot of, unfortunately, sort of mistrust and, mm -hmm. uh, and just sort of like, you know, it's just a bunch of smoke and mirrors. They're just trying to sell me stuff, et cetera, et cetera, when it comes to skincare. And the thing is, I have I've seen it from a slightly different perspective because I understood it from like the science point of view, right? And I also saw it from the perspective of like having the opportunity to see literally thousands of patients who maybe they're 65, 70, had like skin that looked like their 30s and asking them, hey, what do you do for your skin? It always was the same things. It was like sun protection, retinol, vitamin C, consistency, 40 years. And their skin, like literally in their 70s, looks no different than like a 30 year old. And that's the stuff that kind of got me re re realizing that, wow, that, you know, that sort of exercise, that combination, that commitment is worth the while if you want to play the long game and see those changes happen. And it's the only thing that, believe it or not, of the three things that happen with aging, which is changes in the skin, changes in volume, changes in, in laxity, the first one is the only thing you can actually control. The other two are just simply going to happen and that's where you know you need a surgeon or whoever to to address them for you this is all in all the balls in your court so that aspect of it is you know super super important because if you're young enough to be listening to this and you're like okay i can prevent my skin from aging if your skin is aged and you're in your 50s or whatever and you want to return it by all means it's never too late by no stretch of the means it's too late you will see progress as early as even months into it if that that uh that sort of that commitment is there behind it. So that's why I put one and two sort of close to one another because you can't have one without the other, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would say, you know, number three, um, you know, even though it's kind of a reiteration of good skincare habits, but it's really, it's really important to look at the consistency of use of these active products. Because remember when, when I said the science behind it, so I'm just going to say something quickly about that, not to like get into the weeds on, on, you know, all this stuff, but the, the, the changes that you're trying to create are born at the genetic level, meaning that if you're decreasing the production of collagen over time and you're increasing the production of melanin, right? Those are the kind of standard things that are happening. Then what you need to do is you need to do something that's going to reverse those two things, right? And where does that reversal happen? It happens at the DNA level. I mean, it happens at the nucleus, meaning you're, you're, you're sending a signal into the cell saying, you know what, start making more collagen, start decreasing the production of melanin. And that's what those particular ingredients are working on. They're actually going into the, to the cell signals and making these, these positive changes that we're looking for happen. But guess what? If you stop, you know, you're using it for two, three months or a month or whatever it is, and you're just kind of getting things ramped up and you stop using it. Guess what happens? Everything gets down regulated again and goes back to normal. The exact same way is if you were committed to taking great care of your body, your diet is in, in great shape, you're exercising every day, you're starting to build body mass, you're starting to lose fat, everything is heading in the right direction. Everyone's like, you know, you start to feel great about yourself. And then guess what? You kind of get a little bit lazy, something comes up and you stop doing it. How long does it take to, for us to reverse course? And we're back to kind of square one again, right? Yeah. And, uh, and that's, that atrophy that happens to our body is happening at the cellular level and the skin as well. So consistency and continuity are like this. They have to go together if you're going to see the changes build on, the, on, on themselves. So it's a kind of like you make this commitment to yourself that you're like, all right, this stuff is worth my while. I'm just going to make it part of my life for the rest of my life. Like it's, there's not going to be a day that goes by that I'm going to, I'm going to slip and then, you know, on and off. But that's, 
that's how people interact with skincare in general. I mean, you, you look at what women have in their in their drawers, right? I mean, it's funny, like people send me pictures all the time of like, oh, look at my drawer full of stuff. Like they start something, stop something. <laughs> yeah. Stop something, stop something. And it's like on and on and on. And meanwhile, you're literally going nowhere but backwards. Because yeah. The genetic changes that are that are aging you are just floating you down the river the opposite direction, and you're not beating the the current going the other way by starting and stopping. And so the consistency is absolutely and changing. Perfect. When you say too changing yeah, product, like, sure. no, you know, totally. so you're using this for a month and then you flip over to something else. No, and that's the thing. It's like it it, it boggles me because if if it makes sense for you to change if you're not put, if you're not on the right thing, right. but if you find the right thing then stick with it and stick with it forever. Like, I mean, don't change. Yeah. But that's a that's like a almost like a cultural thing that needs to to change, you know, um, when it comes to to skincare habits is like, we got to kind of like do a little bit more homework, identify what we need to do, and then just stick with it and not budge, you know, not get yes. sprayed because our girlfriend says this or an ad in Facebook says that, like, right. have faith in your knowledge, empowerment to know that you're doing the right things. And then just go, go head, head into it and, and close. Oh, your yeah. <laughs> go all in. Yeah. Go yeah. All I in. think, I think you're exactly right. I, you know, I have so many girlfriends that they, I mean, it sounds awful, but they call themselves product whores because yeah. they yeah. always want the latest and greatest. They get lured into really good marketing efforts, whether that be on social media or somewhere else. And they collect all these things and, you know, the stuff that really works, They it, it just goes to the back of the drawer. No. And honestly, that was, to be perfectly frank, I mean, for me, a huge motivation to develop the trifecta in the first place, you know, was because I saw the challenges my patients were having. I mean, when I put them on like eight things, because I know they need, need those eight things, A, it was like super expensive. It ended up being like eight, $900 of, of products. Right. It was expensive, but it was also time consuming. Time consuming. Like yeah. nobody wants to do eight products. No, like, and they, yeah. it, it's hard, right? I mean, I mean, yeah. it takes like you come after a night of being out and about, and you're all full day at work, and you're getting ready to go to bed, and you got to stand in front of your your you know your um, sink and mirror for like 15, 20 minutes. Your you know, husband's waiting for sexy time. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. And they're getting upset, and it's like, yeah. Oh, I'm not sexy like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like, Hold on, honey. <laughs> yeah. step I got another ten minutes to go. So yeah. So the thing is, um, so that was, I mean. That's, I mean, my whole concept was to shove everything that we know you need into three steps, take two, three minutes to do it, no excuses, no needing to overthink it, just boom, off you go. So to me, it's kind of like a, like a revolution in terms of skincare. Like, I, I mean, it's, it's just such a no brainer from a, from an ease point of view and a comprehensiveness point of view. But that was like the, the, the idea behind it. And really kind of the motivation was to get people to, to feel comfortable sticking with the thing. And going forward, knowing that we're taking away some of the, the um, you know, sort of like a confusion behind it or the mistrust behind it and just be like, you got it. And then the nice thing is it's not, just, you know, and this is just sort of a general thing is anytime you use something like that, you got to know that it's being clinically tested too, because it's not enough for like some doctor like myself to step up and say, oh, I made this thing or I, you know, I label, put my name on it or whatever the thing is and it, you know, you should buy it. It works. Like what are the, what is like third party testing show? You know, and I think people don't take that part piece seriously enough. It's like, you got to have an independent lab, look at this stuff, use study subjects, measure this stuff objectively, meaning like, you know, there's devices that look at UV levels of the skin, pore size, like, you know, uh, moisture, fine lines and wrinkles, all under microscopic levels and, and digitally that no one can make up those numbers. It's like, it is what it is. But everyone's blind to the patient. The, the subjects don't even know what they're being, what they're putting on their skin. They just go in and get these things tested. And then at that point, you're like, okay, if there's something real here, then it's worth my time, effort, and money to to for go forward with it. So, so I would say for the for the skin piece, those three things are like absolutely critical, you know. And uh, and I just I think it's when you know even somebody who's say sagging or whatever it is, if they have nice, luminous, bright, clear looking skin, they feel better about themselves, even with the you know, uh, sort of like other aging changes that, that might require surgical, they'll still feel better. And if they happen to get their skin sorted out before surgery, and then they get surgery, well, then they really look like 30 year olds afterwards, because if you got great skin, and we get the shape right, then there's really no physical manifestation of aging, period. And that's always like the most amazing outcomes that we, we uh, produce. So I would say number four is, um, is basically, you know, 
and this is also, I would say, equally as important as everything we're saying here, is when the time comes, when there is, you know, all those like lax type changes, skip all the, the nonsense. I think in 20 years, I can say this boldly, like 20 years of, you know, trying the stuff, like seeing the stuff, like I'm talking about like threads and, and you know, face, uh, like fillers for facelifts and like energy devices, thermage, all therapy, da, 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 you name it, every name you can think of has like a, is a different spin on, on these things. All of that stuff you can put it in a category and just say, this is not going to get the job done. Simple as that. Like, I mean, make it really simple. Yep. When the time comes, when there's enough laxity that's bugging you enough in the, in the right time in your life, you just go in and get this stuff sorted out surgically, one, sh one stop, two week recovery, whatever, find a good surgeon, off you go, done then get back onto, you know, sort of not thinking about your face anymore and just doing the thing. The thing is like, you look at the, and again, we're all guilty of it because we, you know, in the beginning, we didn't know better. It just took us some time to, to realize it, but there's still a lot of this going on. Obviously I don't do that stuff at all anymore. But the thing is you look at the lifestyle it takes for these, these people to manage that type, like every six months in for more filler, every six, you know, six months to a year in for threads, this, that you accumulate the, the costs, the complications, the time, the, the, you know, the distortion that starts to happen yes. as a result of that over a five to 10 year period of, of time for people doing this stuff. And it's like, it's a big deal. Like it's not, I love that you talk about this because, yeah. because not enough people are. And I always say, I'm like, someone's got to be paying for that, those pieces of equipment. So you go into the offices and a lot of times and people go in, they have certain budgets set aside or, you know, they're thinking they're going to get this dramatic result when we all know that's not true. No, because the thing is, it's not treating the actual problem. You no, know? it's just not treating the problem. So, so even if you're trying to camouflage, you know, if you have a jowl, you have some jowl and you try to put filler here and pillar here, well, you're putting volume in a place that never had volume to begin with. Yeah. Then what you end up after several treatments is, you, your jaw starts looking like heavy, like a linebacker. It's, mm -hmm. You still look like a rectangle. You just look like a heavier rectangle, you know, and it, and it still didn't do anything to actually like contour your, your face back up. Right. In the position. So it's like, again, at some point we all have to just be really honest with ourselves and just be straight. Like, okay, we it makes sense. You know, if you can avoid surgery, avoid surgery. Like if there's some way to do it, like we all understand why we got interested in it, but at some point you got to be honest with yourself and mm -hmm. say, you know, what? as a provider, I'm saying as a provider, be like, no, that, we've tried this a lot and it didn't seem to work. We got to stop like, you know, taking our patients money and doing things that, that uh, aren't going to give them a benefit, you know? Um, and, uh, and I think, I think it's interesting. I, I mean, I always worry like if someone's going to put a hit on me whenever I talk about this on Instagram, cause I, I've been pretty, um, oh, I love it. I, love it. <laughs> like I, I saw it too. I, I saw it for years and that's why I, I had a business where I would coach people. I'm like, listen, I'm not medical. But I'm going to tell you, I've seen thousands of people like this is, you know, this is what happens when you go into the office. So go to a, go to a doctor that's going to keep it real because nothing's yeah. going to replace surgery. I mean, yeah. you want to get rid of it. You got to have it removed. It's, it's not coming out through, sure. you know, radio frequency ain't happening. Yeah. No, I mean, we even get like we have spa owners to our patients that like, oh, yeah, every six months I do Morpheus 8 all over. Da, da, da. And it's like, oh, I'm just getting tired of going in every six months. And it's like it just relapses back to where it was. I'm going, you know, it's like, but they won't tell their clients that, of course. You know what I mean? It's one of those right. situations where at the end of the day, the bottom line is I think people are, you know, starting to put more emphasis on knowledge and empowerment. And, and you know, it's like when we put these kind of posts out, you just look at the comments and it's like, you know, people are raising their hands like, yeah, that's exactly how my experience was with it. And I agree. I agree. So it, it, you know, the truth is in, in the reality and the reality kind of has an opportunity to kind of um, display once you put it out there. So I think, um, well, so the yeah. other thing I wanted to add, cause I think this yeah. is really important, at least from my experience is I think the way it's marketed is there's a lower barrier of entry, Yeah, you know, recovery time, but cost basis. And yeah. so we kind of think, well, guy, you know, it's $2,000 or something to do the deep radio frequency. And, but that's better than not spending all this money, but we start to accumulate all these things where if we had just saved it all and did it right, you know, one time we'd yeah. be much happier off. Yeah, Lori, you bring up such a good point. So, so obviously, you know, there's surgeons at all different price levels and all that kind of stuff, right? I mean, so you re you recognize that surgery can be very expensive. It can be less expensive. It can be all over the place, right? Depending on on who you choose to go with. But the the reality of it is that these for the person who is in a position where they can't just go out and choose the best surgeon in the world and say I'm going to go to this person, 
and they they complain that you know sur surgery is expensive yet they're doing these type of treatments left and right right because they're doing it in like a thousand dollar two thousand dollar increments they don't realize that in the last five to ten years of doing these treatments they could have paid for two facelifts like literally could have paid for two facelifts because it literally i mean i see it all we used to do this stuff all the time and patient would walk out of fillers in our office two three fillers it was like three four thousand mm -hmm. dollars i mean you know, luma is like a thousand something a a, yeah. a a syringe one cc a syringe you know so it's like it gets expensive sculpture expensive you know all these different things get expensive but when you're when you think like you're paying it in little little you know sort of like a here and there you think that doesn't add up it's still coming out of the same pot that eventually is going to pay for your for your facelift down the road that's why i say like forget all that stuff and just plan you know on getting it done one time one expense off you go save up for that moment keep it as like a separate fund or whatever knowing that it's like if you own a car if you have a house at some point it needs to be remodeled at some point the car needs to go through a yes. tune-up or whatever it is and it's going to cost you know a little bit to do that so at the end of the day like plan for those known expenses that are going to come and don't waste your money on this the the stuff you know, in between. Um, and that's, I would say it's probably the most efficient and clean way to manage the, the, uh, the aging process. And then, um, I think number five, is just this concept of doing your research. Like I, I have to say the patients who come to see me, I admire them so much because they literally, each one of them tell me like, Oh, I've been researching this for two years, for three years. Like all over the country, all over the world, like I'm looking, I'm learning da da da, And I've chose, you know, I felt comfortable and I chose you, right? That is the, I mean, you're giving your face to somebody at the end of the day, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You got it. You can't just like go to, you know, the first instance who's just down the block just because it's convenient to do that necessarily, or that your girlfriend went to them for a, you know, breast augmentation and they, you know, they love the doctor and they think, oh, that's going to be the best person for my face as well. Like you got to take this stuff a little bit more. And that is not just for surgery, but it's also for, you know, products and it's also for treatments and everything you're going to do, just dig in a little bit, take your time, do some research and try to figure things out. Like take ownership of those decisions and look out for yourself the best, because I think the attitude of, oh, I just trust so-and-so at this med spa because they, they, you know, they're a doctor or they're a nurse practitioner or whoever. And they, if they say so, it must be true. I wouldn't take it that way. I think it doesn't, it's not that they're necessarily trying to like, deceive you but people operate at different paradigms like some people really believe what they're doing is the right thing and yet they're completely wrong the way they're viewing you know the aging process you know as a as a provider so they're like they're kind of in their own heads thinking yeah if i just fill 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 that will take care of everything i'm doing the best thing for this patient who quote unquote doesn't want surgery but they don't even realize what they're doing is necessarily wrong like it's yeah. up to me to figure that out you know but i but I, and i will add a, a lot of those places are you know they're they're run they're, they're a business and they are looking at metrics daily so well, i didn't want know, to say that but i 100 well, percent agree. i'll you. say it i wrote a book about it i mean yeah. i you know, and I, that's why I wanted to warn people about the good, bad, and ugly, because I was like, listen, someone's got to pay for that. And when you go into corporate medicine, that kind of corporate medicine model, everything is looked at. They're looking at how many people call, how many people show, how many people don't show, you know, how many times they did, how many you booked, your upsells, everything is looked at. So I totally agree. Uh, and now that you open up that, that uh, door, I'll just, I'll just add a couple of just points. I totally agree. 100% um, it is, it's an unfortunate way. And I think in the last podcast, Lori, we talked about this is an unfortunate way to look at people who are basically, in my mind, actual patients, no different than somebody coming in with a medical condition. Remember, the medical condition here is the way the person feels about the aging changes. And their desire and their hope is they're going to a medical provider to solve that problem for them, just the same way they would if they had, you know, like a, um, deviated septum or, or an ACL tear or a brain tumor or anything. I mean, that's what we're here for as, as doctors and as healthcare professionals is to offer them a true, you know, from point A to B sort of guidance about how they can solve the problem that they're coming in for. And, you know, in the, in the, uh, in the, in our past, we used to have, um, you know, as part of these kind of, um, you know, filler and, and whatever companies they would send in their consultants to kind of like look over your, your, your practice and figure out ways you can. And the first thing they would always talk about is like, financial targets. And I swear in our entire, to this day, we've never had a financial target. Like literally, and they were always there, like they would want us to create one. I'm like, that's not what this is. Like, 
let, we, we're just going to focus on doing good work, treating our patients like they are our family members, advising in the exact same way. The rest of it will take care of itself. Like there is no, but that's a completely reverse approach to like the way most of these situations are, yeah. are geared up. It's like there's a there's a thing and you have to sell this much and you have to upsell that much, which the difference between going in and getting one filler versus somebody recommending two or three fillers, if there's like a quota <laughs> that needs to be filled, you know, yeah. that's that's going to be, you know, you're going to get filler in places that you don't need it or more yeah. than you need in, in situations. See it all the time they're walking out. And I, I, I love that you said it. And I'm a firm believer. I used to, my philosophy was always serve the patient. The revenue will follow. Yeah. And you have, you know, do the right thing. And I saw the other side of it and it's yeah. heartbreaking. And you yeah. just want people to know. So your, your tip number five could not, you couldn't scream it louder. Do your yeah. research. Totally. Yeah. And I love it when people see those, when we put these posts out, they're like, oh, I was going to go do X, Y, and Z treatment. Now I'm not, I see, I hear it all the time. And I, and I, I mean, it's like, it's obviously it's like a, you know, it's a small pie of the world that, that is hearing this, but at the end of the day, it's like so necessary, you know, so necessary to, uh, I mean, for anything we're ever going to do medically or, or any kind of healthcare related, we got to just really take ownership of those decisions for ourselves. Yeah. And you're yeah. putting that great information out there because social media is, I mean, we call it the wild, wild, wild west and the aesthetic oh, yeah. field. I mean, yeah. people, they just don't know what to believe. They see a, I always say they see the highlight reel, they see the sound bite and um, they love a before and after and they don't talk about the pre and post and anything in between. So they're like, Oh, I want that. Well, the scariest yeah. thing is the scare, honestly, is when we see one of our before and afters taken and put into you know, someone's not like, I mean, I've seen it in like a skincare, you know, real advertisement where they're saying like, you know, like a this dramatic before and after is that we, we post is like a result of some peel or some whatever, like that was like a, some skincare product or something that they're selling or like some other doctors taking our before yeah. and after using it as like a non-surgical, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like my wife's face has been on probably at least like 10 different, oh, you know, things is like, <laughs> As like a, you know, like, cause we did a fat transfer on her and it's like, you know, they're talking about fillers being on this or that, like some laser they do and all this kind of, it's just crazy. But yeah, it really, really is. Unfortunately, um, I think too much of a monetized type of a, of a, you know, field and environment. And it needs, I think the patient ultimately is the one who can like put an end to that type of, uh, um, you know, misguidance. Once yeah, and, and people like yourself out. that are speaking out. And like I said, kudos to you because a lot of docs want to say it, but they don't. But they don't. Yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. And you know, what's really a shame is, you know, I'm in that mode of, of the aging. And when you turn 50, it's like falling off a fucking cliff, right? And you look in the mirror and you're like, oh gosh, where did that come from? It is an emotional journey. Oh, and yeah. when you prey on a, like, and, and women in particular, I think, you know, we kind of, as women, look at the lens that men kind of typically get better with age. It's this weird thing, dichotomy that happens. Yeah. And I feel like, especially with social media, that people really manipulate the feelings of women because it's not easy to age, period. Right. That, I, that's why I said it's like, I mean, it's the emotion we're treating. It's the, it's the, mm -hmm. the you know, the feeling of discontent and the feeling of, of really, I mean, at the end of the day, it's kind of a, if you think about it for a second, you're like, okay, wait a minute, I'm, I'm actually going to live, knock on wood, if I'm healthy, et cetera, I'm going to live, you know, into my eighties, nineties, maybe even longer, you know, right. And you're 50 and you're seeing these changes happen. That's a long way to live with these changes, right? It's a long time to, to live with a, these changes that are not getting better. They're not staying the same. They're only getting worse. So it's a, it, I mean, our patients really, I mean, at, at the end of the day, they, they come in, it's like the same thing. It's like, there's a sense of, of like loss of hope, you know, before this point, it's like fear of, of, you know, just not recognizing themselves and living, having to force to live it. And then when this is offered to them and they have the opportunity to kind of reverse everything, it's like the joy and the, and the, you know, all that comes, it comes from such a, you know, real place. Um, and I think anyone who, who's practicing this, you know, it's such a privilege to be able to be in a position to help people um, in that way and, and to take advantage of that with, and not give them what they're actually searching for and hoping for is such a, like, to me, it's such a, I don't even know. I mean, it's, I mean, I'm, I want, I want to be polite about it, but it's like, it really, really bothers me a lot. Yeah, you know? No, it, it does me too. And I, but I love that you touched on 
one of the things that made me, I always said I had such a love affair with the industry because the, the, the stories of the after when they would see themselves in the mirror and the difference and the life changes. And it was, uh, there was nothing else like it. I used to say I got more out of it than, than they did because it was, and I'm sure you have yeah, yeah. Know, hundreds and thousands of stories like that. And so yeah. you're making a difference. You're changing people's lives. And um, I always, anytime I get a chance to say that to a doctor, like if, I know you're in surgeries and you're doing it, but at the end of the day, you really are, you are making a powerful impact um, on people. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And I, and I feel that, and that's, again, you know, that's the inspiration of doing it day in and day out at the end of the day, you know, and it was really kind of a, quite honestly, the inspiration behind putting an honest product out there as well, because I mean, that industry more than even surgery and all this other is like, is filled with false claims and false promises mm -hmm. and uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's like, you know, doing it right. will will it has a lot of intrinsic value as well, you know, at the end of the day. Well, let's, Let's talk about that really briefly because I am a subscriber of Karam MD Skin, obsessed. And I think what my favorite product actually is polish. So I do use Trifecta and I do polish just because I have I get very dry skin, so exfoliation is not she has the been best. talking about it nonstop. So no, I'm, I'm I mean I have between so, you talking about it and today I'm I'm in. Yeah, so you want to kind of show because I, I and I love the way it's packaged. Yeah, it would polish. Okay, so so this is this is polish. Mm -hmm. So it, it basically it's it's cool. It's like a it's a powder. It's an enzymatic yeah. powder. Which okay, so exfoliation is the act of removing dead you know skin cells off it. And I think about it as like you know how you have an onion, you peel those those uh, dull layers off, and then you get to that glistening layer. Mm -hmm. Exfoliation is peeling that stratum corneum off and getting down to the, the more glistening layer of skin. And as we age, there's just thickening of that layer and needs to be exfoliated. Now, what are the ways you can exfoliate? You can use microdermabrasion, you could use chemical peel, you could use a, a full field resurfacing. Um, and those are all great, but they require, you know, go into an office and do, do that kind of stuff. Uh, Polish uses an enzyme that basically digests the that stuff off the skin. So the, um, the uh, um, uh, bromelain and papain are the, the basic enzymes that do that. In addition, it has like vitamin C, has a number of other different things in there that nourish the skin and brighten its skin and all that, um, azelaic acid, et cetera. So the idea is you, you, you put this on, da, 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 you put a few drops of, uh, of um, you know, water, it turns into kind of a little bit of a paste. You put it all over, leave it on for three to five minutes. It, it does its thing enzymatically and uh, and then it comes out and your skin feels like a lot softer. You do that two yeah. or three times a week and it just keeps the process of exfoliation, um, you know, gradually kind of like keeping dead stuff off the skin, but also chipping away at the layers of, of dead tissue on the, on the surface. So it's the act of exfoliation, especially for mature skin is really, really important. And then, you know, as far as like trifecta goes, it's like the original, you know, motivation was what's basically is illuminate, which is, 21 different active ingredients in this thing. I mean, every category of, of anti-aging skincare stuff that you need is literally in this. That was the challenge. How do you get everything to live in harmony with each other and get it to basically not like blow up the skin when it when you put it on? I mean, normally if you're gonna put on a lot of stuff, especially yeah. coming from different brands and all this kind of stuff, they can be very, you know, they, they don't work well together. They don't, they don't play in the same sandbox well together. But this, I mean, it took almost four years to get this thing um, to be um, available in a way that people with any type of skin, you know, oily, dry, young, mature, da, 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 like male, female could benefit from this um, and tolerate it, you know? So it's kind of like this was, but then when we, once this came out or when we was getting formula, we realized cleansing is a really important part of, of skincare too. It's like, you can't just go and put this on your skin without proper cleansing. So, and there's a lot more to cleansing than that meets the eye, you know, non-foaming, gentle, you know, all these things that, because it's like things that I've learned along the way is like foaming is abrasive, it dries the skin more, et cetera, makes more inflammation to the skin. So you actually don't want a foaming cleanser. You don't want an abrasive condition to your skin. You want everything to kind of calm so that when you put product on it, it literally just absorbs like a sponge onto the skin. So that's, you know, so we wanted to control that step and develop this, uh, this um, product called Rinse that has like a bunch of botanical stuff like aloe and a number of other things to calm and soothe the skin in addition to properly cleansing it deeply um, as well. And then as, as this was, you know, sort of brewing in the lab, um, Illuminate realized more and more the importance of vitamin C 
as an anti-aging sort of powerhouse piece. And vitamin C is like the standard is ascorbic acid. <clears throat> we wanted something that that outperformed ascorbic acid. So there's there's a, um, a patented product that has three different types of vitamin C that you know are lipid, meaning like fat soluble and water soluble. The absorption is higher. The efficacy is higher. And again, it's you know, has a number of other components to it. But when you do all these these kind of, I mean, so we wanted vitamin C to have its dedicated steps to make sure it gets on the skin because it, it affects collagen, collagen growth, um, lightens the skin, it um, decreases pigmentation at the cellular level, it has a lot of really antioxidant effects. It's such an important piece. So between all this, you're getting retinols, you're getting niacinamide, lipids, um, lighteners, they're botanical, non-hydroquinone, um, you name it, you get it. And then the idea was to get this all to where you can do it simply and quickly. So there's like no thought behind it. It's like, oh, I, you don't have to worry about what goes on first, this, that. You just simply follow, wash your face, put the vitamin C on and put Illuminate on and then go to bed. And to do it to where you get high high doses of it, but where your skin can tolerate, we had to split the doses so you could do it AM, PM, and then use micro-releasing kind of technology that allows like things like retinol and things like that to slowly break down into the skin as opposed to overwhelming it so you can use it in the day and not have to worry about uh, you know sun issues and things like that. So a lot of thought went into it, but at the end of the day, um, the clinical studies literally were like off the chart. And, and that really was the thing that gave me the the go ahead confidence to to you know basically advocate for it and, and sell it and and talk about it and and really promote it at the end of the day because it's a real deal kind of a thing you know yeah well where <laughs> yeah no it is and 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 it is very simple and I you know I'm a hummingbird so simple simplicity is key for me all right people. Yeah. <laughs> you know what to do. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here with us today. And it was great to have you back in Studio 50, although now it's remote. Um, you always deliver. Uh, you, you guys set up a great show. I mean, that, our last uh, podcast was my favorite. You guys uh, do a wonderful job. And it was fun to be able to share and talk about this, um, you know, again with you guys. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for having yeah. me. All right. And thank you, listeners, watchers, and we will catch you next week.